My name is Lokesh Gupta, and I am a software development manager at AWS. In this session, I'll give you an overview of TorchServe, which is a model server that our team at AWS built for PyTorch and is now hosted under the PyTorch org. In today's session, we'll cover the following topics. First, I would like to start by answering the question, why TorchServe? Why, why did we build it in the first place and what kind of pain points do we want to address with TorchServe? I'll then take a deep dive into the TorchServe architecture, walking you through the various components of TorchServe, how they interact with each other and what kind of features do, do they provide. I'll then walk you through some of the key features of TorchServe along with setting the direction for future. What do we plan to do in the coming months and years with TorchServe? So let us begin by asking ourselves the question, why TorchServe? And I would like to answer that question for you. So in this slide, I have captured a framework usage graph. If you look carefully, this extends from 2017 until very recently. And you'll see that the dark orange band has shown significant growth over the past years. And this represents the popularity of iTorch. It has been increasing since two years now. Having said that, there has never been an official model server for PyTorch, like we see for some other frameworks. PyTorch developers today need to write their own custom code when they want to deploy their models for prediction. And oftentimes, they also need custom infrastructure to scale and monitor what is happening with their served models. So there was no standard infrastructure to monitor usage or performance statistics for the models that serve predictions. We saw these as developer pain points and developed TorchServe to address them. Let's take a deeper look at the architecture of TorchServe. At its heart, is it's a server application which has some functionality and then there is an architecture behind it. Let's first talk about the functionality part. TorchServe is aimed to help people host their models for serving predictions. And this is the basic functionality of TorchServe. Before you can run predictions with the models, of course, you need to load them in the memory of TorchServe. You can load multiple models at a time. TorchServe provides management APIs to register models for running predictions, to unregister models, to send queries to check the status of the loaded models, or to upscale or downscale the workers that are running in the backend to serve model predictions. Now, depending upon the need of a particular model in terms of the required latency or the load, number of predictions per second, users have this capability to manage the number of workers in the backend to serve models. Architecturally speaking, TorchServe has got a front end and a back end, as shown in the picture here. The front end part is primarily a web server with, which exposes a REST API towards its clients. The APIs are categorically divided into management APIs and inference APIs. The management APIs would usually be used by TorchServe administrators to uh, enable loading of newer models or to unregister a model or to upscale or downscale the workers. The inference APIs, as the name suggests, are used primarily for any inference once the models are loaded in TorchServe memory. The front-end part also implements several other key features of TorchServe, such as model management, version management, and controlling the backend. The backend runs the actual worker processes to serve prediction requests made by the users. Depending upon the serving needs for each model, like number of requests or latency requirements, a user can upscale or downscale the number of workers in the backend. This can be achieved through the management APIs. TorchServe also includes a model store where you could load or store several models to be quickly loaded back into TorchServe memory. Next, let's talk about some of the key features of TorchServe. The most important feature of TorchServe that I'd like to talk about is its capability to load multiple models and run predictions with them concurrently. On top of that, TorchServe facilitates users to deploy their models with practically zero code change to their models. 
Plotsoft provides default handlers both for the loading part as well as running inference. And the default handlers work pretty well for most common model architectures. But of course, as, as a user, you might have your own need, special needs for your models. And Plotsoft provides you with a mechanism to provide your own custom loaders both for uh, loading the model as well as running inference. And in this case, you would just provide your own uh, default handlers for both loading and the inference part. An important feature of TorchServe is model version management. For one same model, TorchServe allows users to load and register two different versions of the same model. Users could concurrently run inference uh, with both the versions in memory. They can also use this feature to do A-B testing, which means that you have a version A of a model running in production today, and now you have a newer version of the model version B. Before deploying it in production, you can use TorchServe to do a performance, latency, those kinds of comparisons with your already running version. And once you're satisfied, you can do a hot swap of version B against version A. Next to that, we are also building support for ensemble of models. This will be coming soon. With this feature, users will be able to define a DAG based on a set of models. And this ensemble of models will then be considered by Torser as one single model. Users can just send a request, inference request to this ensemble of models and they'll just get an inference result like they do with a single model. Torser has been designed in such a way that it can scale up to serve models at a low latency. It also has support for Torscape models for higher performance. Besides this, Torso provides an API for users to generate and collect metrics. Out of the box, Torso comes with support for Prometheus, but the design allows for users to integrate their own favorite metrics collection tools in the form of a plugin. Let's talk a bit about the future direction for Torso. We are working towards making Torso more memory efficient as well as to consume lesser system resources than it does today. This will allow Torso to scale better in future. Another important direction TorchServe is taking is to be compliant with serving APIs such as KF Serving. We believe that this is an important step for TorchServe to be adopted more widely in the user community. TorchServe aims to support Capcom.ai in future for model interpretability as an integrated feature of TorchServe. We're also building auto-scaling support for AWS SageMaker and Kubernetes for large-scale deployments using TorchServe. In the end, here are a few resources to get you started with TorchServe. I encourage you to take a look at these resources. There are a lot of useful links, examples, and other resources which can help you understand TorchServe better. Of course, we are highly motivated to hear back from you, from our community, for new requests that can make TorchServe better for future. There is a session today on TorchServe in which we will take your questions and try to answer them. Looking forward to your continued support for TorchServe.